Hi there, and welcome to another pencast for the course Reasoning and Logic. This one is about redundancy in arguments, and it tackles an old exam question. So the question says that we have some argument that has premises P1 all the way up to Pn, and some conclusion C. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we consider all situations where all of these premises are true and for those situations we want to consider whether the conclusion is true or not. And the question specifically is about when we use rewrite rules. So assume that P1 implies Q holds. Is it then valid to substitute P1 by Q? Well, if we take a look, the argument P1, P1 implies Q, therefore Q is valid. So we can safely replace P1 by Q, no problem. Now, what about the second one? Assume that Q implies P1 holds, substitute P by Q, P1 by Q. Well, the argument P1, Q implies P1, therefore Q is invalid. This is not how we should read an implication. So we may not safely replace P1 by Q. This answer is false. It is therefore the answer that we're looking for. But let's try answer C and D anyway. So answer C says P3 is P1 and P2. Well, from P1 and P2, we can derive P1. And from P1 and P2, we can also derive P2. So if we have the premise P3, we don't need this premise P1 and P2 explicitly. P3 covers both, so we can remove P2 from the set of premises and lose no information. We lose nothing. What about answer D then? Well, if P3 equals P1 implies P2, well, we're only considering the cases where all premises are true. So, we already know that P1 and P2 hold. So do we really care that if P1 holds, then P2 holds as well? We know both are true already. So this implication again adds no new information. So we can indeed safely remove the premise P3 from our set of premises. I hope that cleared up how you could tackle a question like this and what kind of information you can use when looking at the validity of an argument. With this, we've come to the end of this video, but I'll see you around for the next one.